Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today is a special day. Because my wife and I did not compare notes. And what she's talking about is what God wants me to speak to you about. Amen. Holy fire, burn upon my altar, from within me, Spirit, you take over, holy fire, burn upon my altar, holy fire. I want to burn, burn, burn for you again. Oh, yeah. Lord, let me burn, burn, burn. Ayakata, burn for you again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, set my heart on fire for you. I want to burn for you. Ekata. Oh, Lord, set my life in order for you. I want to burn for you. I want to know your will. Madabadabadabashete. I want to know your ways. I want to be like you. Ah, Fata. Mandeboshata. Haleboshata. Please, let's just be in an attitude of prayer. I have a word of God for somebody here. That baby is on the way. Maneka sofa la manasata. Yekanda bala basunto. And for you to know, it's a boy. Ma kepete ekaba ande leboshia. Le braka de suntoshia. Amen. There's so much. I feel so strongly to do. Like I should just move into the prophetic, but let's do it at God's timing. Amen. The title, the theme of this year is my year of excellence. Tell your neighbor my year of excellence. And it means that in everything we do, we're going to strive for excellence. Amen. A lot has been said, and we're going to say a whole lot more. Praise the Lord. One of the things that I have discovered, I don't know about you, but has been a great burden for me, is understanding prayer. Why do I pray certain prayers? They get answered. I pray certain prayers. It looks like there's a delay. I pray certain prayers. As I'm praying it, I know it's being answered. Amen. I'm praying certain prayers. Even me, I feel a disconnect. Praise God. I thank God one of my daughters is in the house today. Praise God. I texted her late night and late last night. I want her to know she's the one. I said, if I didn't see her in church today, I would just go to her house from here. Amen. I can still go to her house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
Today we're talking about excellence in prayer. Achieving excellence in prayer. Uh, let's open our Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 6. That second baby is on the way. Hallelujah. You know, I know many of you know that I'm an only child. Or I was an only child. And my mother looked for children until she could not give birth. Amen. Uh -huh. So, one grace that God has given me is to pray for the fruit of the womb. And over time in my ministry, I have seen God do the impossible. I've seen him give a plus 50, well over 50-year-old a child, praise the Lord. I, here in this same victory house, I remember that day when God said I should tell her she was going to have a child. Amen. Even me, that I was going to deliver the prophecy, you know, my heart was shaking. So I said, well, it looks like God says, <laughs> well, I could look about her and say, God said. I said, it looks like from what I'm seeing that God says you will have a child. She was visiting, and that's why you need to be attentive. I was visiting from Nigeria, praise God. She was well over 50. Five years later, she called me. She said, I'm in America. I want to come to the church. Some of you are old enough in this church to remember. And when she came, I saw a baby girl with her that was maybe about five or yeah, five years old. And I was afraid to ask. Amen. You know, God told me, but I was afraid to ask. Until she held the microphone and said, I have come to testify. That I came here when all, for you to know what I'm saying, she was already appointed a PAMSEC. That means, I don't know, what, what can I call that? Uh, a director general. That's like the highest pinnacle of civil service. That gives you an idea of her age, especially in the country of my birth. Amen. So I'm telling somebody here, the first baby is coming, the second baby is coming, and it's going to be a boy. Praise the name of the Lord. Excellence in prayer, 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 6. There are stories in the Bible that gave me a lot of challenges as a young Christian. This is one of them. If you read it from verse 1, David wanted to move the ark into the city of David. I'll take it from verse 6. And when they came to Nacon, Na, Nacons, Nacon, Nations, Nacons, anyway, threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Verse 7. And the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his arrow. And he died there by the ark of God. Ah! As a young Christian, ah, ah, ah. they were moving the ark. The ark was about to fall. This man didn't want God's ark to fall. He put his hand. And the Bible says God's anger was kindled against him. Now, God many times is angry with, there are sometimes God is angry with people and God will not be angry with you in Jesus' name. But not only did God get annoyed, there and then, bam, the man died. Ah, as a young Christian, I didn't understand it. It thing used to trouble me. But I'm still a young Christian. Tell your neighbor, pastor is still a young Christian. But I've begun to understand things a bit better now. I don't have time to go through the story, but you find out that the people that were carrying the ark of God did not obey the protocols of carrying the ark of God. There was a way and manner in which God had said his ark was supposed to be carried. They didn't obey it. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? And because of that, that happened. And you know what that brought my mind to? The reason why God gave me this topic is because a lot of us, we pray anyhow. Talk to God anyhow. Approach God anyhow. Because we live in an age where grace, the original grace, not the hyper grace, the grace that God released allows us to get away with what people could never have gotten away with. Amen. Today, I want to try and open a topic that cannot end in one Sunday. If I teach it for 50 Sundays, it cannot end. But hopefully, by the time I'm done with us, by the time the Holy Spirit is done with us, not me, our eyes of understanding will increase. Let me hear your better amen. amen. The second scripture I want us to read is 1 Corinthians 14.40. 40. Where Apostle Paul was saying, let everything be done decently and in order. Many of us grew up in churches that you could not approach a particular part of the church. Especially if you were a lady or you were having, you know, your monthly flow, you could not approach the altar. Many of us grew, in a church, grew up in churches where if you passed in front of the altar, you did like this. Out of reverence. But nowadays, praise God, let me serve, I know how I am serving my God. Some of you even begin to question God. I saw something very funny on social media this morning. I saw uh, there's this musician called Shion Kuti criticizing a man of God. And I said, it's okay. God will help him. God will show him mercy. Praise God. He said, I want to expose this, your God. And I want to show you corrections in the Bible. I said, ah. You are trying. <laughs> Amen. You want to correct the Bible. You have entered another level. <laughs> so what am I talking about? The first thing I want you to understand is that next Bible verse, 60, Psalm 65 verse 4. Oh, by the way, we're going to be talking about altars. That's why, that's the connection between I didn't share it with my wife. She didn't know my message. And when she came to pray, I know that that's what God wants you to hear today. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Psalm 65 verse 4. Can we read it together? Let's rise up on our feet and read it together. It's important. It's really, really important that we drive this one in. What does it say? It says, blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you. Let's stop there. Let's say it again. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you. One more time. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you. That he may dwell in your courts and be satisfied with the goodness of your house. Praise the Lord. You may be seated for a while. The first thing that I want you to know is that <laughs> Praise God. Many of us can pray. Do you understand me? Many can say they are praying. But how many can say that God speaks to them when they are praying? Hello. Please don't let the children distract you. I want you to be focused on what I'm saying. Many people Oh, we say we pray. In fact, we make noise when we pray. There's a saying where I come from that it is not the size of the cross on your neck that shows how close you are to God or the size of the Bible. How many people remember back in the day that some people would have a big Bible like this? <laughs> Amen. It's not by size of Bible. It's not by how high your voice is. In fact, if many times 
the voice of God is so quiet. Sometimes there's a place for loudness in prayer. Don't get me wrong. Amen. But sometimes I question when you are too noisy in the place of prayer. Any of you are too noisy. I can imagine going to see when my late father was alive. Daddy, give it to me. Daddy, I tell you to give it to me. Come on, Daddy, give it to me. You must give it to me now. I'm showing you violence. Give it to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm sure my father will call one soldier and say they should take me out from his presence. Amen. I know we are too noisy. But when we get there, praise the Lord. But there's something I noticed. There is a protocol to prayer. If you keep to it, it's for your own good. If you don't keep to it, it's for your own loss. Many are frustrated as Christians because they don't understand the basic protocols of prayer. May, many are taught one-way conversation. You just come to God, I want, I need, give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Bam. Amen. There are protocols. Let me use this example. How many of you here have ever had a doctor's appointment in America? Doctor's appointment. Anybody here? I have. <laughs> Amen. Do you just say, doctor, I'm coming to see you now. Make sure when I get there, Doors open. I come into your presence. I don't want to wait in the waiting room. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want you to check my insurance. I don't want you to. How many of you, you do, even if you go into the ER, you don't walk there. Say, where they day? Where they day? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go and call the doctor. Tell him. That's Jesus speaking day here. Praise the Lord. You can't do it to an earthly doctor. It is true. Uh, don't worry. Praise the Lord. They just want to check whether you are listening. Is there anybody here? You just walk into the hospital. If except there's an emergency. If you want an appointment. Sometimes it is two weeks. Sometimes it is one month. Sometimes it is three months. Praise God. But Jehovah, Nisi, the king of glory, he has turned into someone you just, <laughs> hey God. And then, in fact, we've even made it better now. Some of us don't call him God, we call him God. Hey, God, I need you to listen to me. God and God. Amen. Well, that may be a pronunciation thing, so let's not go there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a protocol to prayer. There is a protocol to divine visitation. There is a, let me use another example for you. How many of you here work in corporate America or work, have worked in any corporate place? On Monday morning, typically you have a meeting or daily you have meetings now is there any meeting that you have that is not fixed is there any meeting that you have that doesn't have an agenda is there any meeting that you have that you don't plan for before you go there or you just go there freestyle you know what i'm saying amen amen i can tell you at least my wife she works for Deloitte. When she's preparing for a meeting, it's like she's going to war. Amen. I wake up in the night, I see her with the computer. Sweetheart, what are you doing? I have a meeting at 7 a.m. But to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you come anyhow. Praise God. You talk anyhow. And then when you don't get any how result or any how response, you say, but I prayed. Now listen to me. 
if your baby comes to you and hits you, say, mommy, mommy, even slaps you. Amen? Maybe it's six months, one year, one, two years. You say, stop that. Amen? Some of you look at your children beside you. If that's your son comes now and slaps you, what will you do? <laughs> Amen. Well, one of our mommies here said, ah, <laughs> that day, he will know. <laughs> I will describe his father's house for him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What am I trying to say? Maybe we should change prayer and stop using the word prayer. Maybe we should use prayer appointment so that you will place seriousness on it. At management meetings, strategic decisions that affect every employee are taken. If HR is having a meeting, a management meeting, praise God. That day, they will decide the salaries. That day, they will decide those that will get promoted. That day, they will decide those that will get fired. Maybe if you can give going to God's presence half the reverence you will give to going to your earthly job, maybe you begin to see a difference. Hallelujah. So, this leads me to the word altar that my wife mentioned. When she started mentioning, I said, ah, this woman is in the spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. What is an altar? Do you have an altar? Amen. Let me use one word that you like, you may like. You see, the people of the other religions and other beliefs, they don't play. They know they play. They don't play. Amen. Uh, for those of you that grew up in the village or had some exposure to the village, there were places they told you don't walk in front of. Anybody here? Any witness here? They tell you don't, if, if, You know, in, 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 in the lingua franca of where I was born, they say, if they're born, you wear. Eh? Meaning, don't walk anyhow in front of that shrine. Let me help you again. The brothers we have in another belief system, they pray five times a day. They have a protocol. They don't just pray anyhow. They pray at 5 a.m. Can you imagine? In this generation, we wake up our children and tell them to pray. Let's not even go far. You, waking up at 5 a.m. to pray. Ah, did I kill Jesus? Amen. Is my matter as serious as that? But it's a time for you to come to. If you want to be excellent in prayer, you need to talk to yourself. Tell your neighbor, talk to yourself. Unto yourself be true. An altar is a place, simple, where the realm of the physical meets with the realm of the spirit. Now, whether it's a negative spirit or the spirit from the kingdom of darkness or it's the spirit of the living God, that's your choice. Amen. I'm not going to talk about the kingdom of darkness because I don't know too much about, well, let me put it this way. That's not my focus. I'm going to talk about you, child of God. Tell me certain things that are important. You want to have an annual general meeting. Okay, thank God there's virtual meetings now. But back in the day, 
Tell me certain characteristics about a meeting. It has a venue. Amen? It has a time. It has an agenda. Praise the Lord. And it has a list of people that are allowed to come into the meeting and a list of people that are not allowed to come into the meeting. If you are here and you have a regular prayer time, one t- I'm not talking about five times a day. Amen. Uh, uh, what's going on? Everybody quiet. Amen. Amen. You have a regular prayer time that if they call you at six, they know you cannot pick your phone. Pastor Bimbo is praying. Amen. I use my wife because I don't want to call anybody so that you don't think Pastor is picking on you. Now, have you attended some meetings that were supposed to last for one hour and they lasted for five minutes? You say, oh, uh, pretty much what we did last week, everything is good, let's talk next week. Amen. And there are some meetings that were supposed to last five minutes and two hours you are still there. But they start at the same You serve a God of order. You serve a God of decency. You serve a God that if you go into the Bible and you see how he even, when in, the, in those days, if a priest is to come into the Holy of Holies, the level of preparation. Amen. But y'all just come anyhow. Do anyhow. Where I come from, they say if you do anyhow, what will happen? You, you see anyhow, that's the challenge. So, let's first of all start. You want fire to fall. On Mount Camel, Elijah repaired the altar. He didn't say because he's used to seeing the fire of God. He didn't say because he's used to walking in the realm of the spirit. He didn't say because he already has a relationship with God. That when it was time for fire to fall, he repaired the altar. Brother God is telling somebody here, you need to repair your altar. When you are in UCU or FCS or Corpus Fellowship, or whatever fellowship you are in. Amen. Uh Uh-uh. 5 a.m., you will pray. Amen. But now, the blessings that God has given you is your excuse. I know that there's nobody like that here. I know that all of you have a specific time that you pray. Amen. As your pastor, I'm prophesying into your life. It is when you get serious with God. Amen. That your encounters increase. It is when you attach seriousness to this God that you will see change. Praise the Lord. I'm not even sure whether I should move on from that. Altars are so powerful. I've told you. We've been talking about Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. The spirit, an excellent spirit was in him. Daniel was preferred. (laughs) Daniel had an altar three times a day. He used to pray on it. And let me tell you, there is nobody here that is as busy as Daniel. Because Daniel had 120 nations reporting to him. Amen. 
Can I tell you another thing? Tell your neighbor, pastor wants to share a secret with you. Do you know that when the enemy wants to get you, the first thing he attacks is your altar? They were looking for how to get Daniel. Amen. They didn't know how to get him. They said, ah, get him through his altar. Once that altar is taken away, we can do with him as we please. Child of God, what's your excuse? Is this sleep? Maybe you sleep too much. Amen. A little sleep. A little slumber. So shall poverty come. <laughs> what is an altar? In Genesis 13:4, it says Abraham began to call upon the name of the Lord. An altar is a place where you call upon the name of of the Lord. Amen. Do you know that there are times when I'm sleeping and I sleep past the time that I normally pray? I'm telling you, I believe that I'm woken up to go and pray. I will just notice I wake up. In fact, there are times when I'm so tired that I wake up and find myself on my knees. What happened? Because I'm still walking on my own, but at least I, I'm, I, maybe I, they'll give me 40%. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you consecrate a time to be with God, God will always show up. Can I give you a little insight? Because I'm going to round up here. There's no way I can even open the next portion of this message. Praise the Lord. Many of us come from, we're of African origin. And when we are praying, we start to pray against altars of our father's house. Covenants of our father's house. Why do we pray those prayers? Because almost invariably, the generation after us may not know it, and maybe my generation, but the generation before us, your parents will tell you, ah, there's one prayer that they normally pray, or there's one thing that they normally do. Even if you can't come, they'll say, send money. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Huh? You know, they'll say, send money. What is that money? To service that altar. You know what? When an altar has people that have been dedicated to it, listen to me, you'll catch this, and they don't show face, the altar has right to go and punish them. And that's why many people face certain challenges and can't explain. Am I the only one? Why is it that this is going wrong? Why is it one challenge after the other? Now, the only way you can <laughs> break loose from that altar, amen, is that altars have different levels of authority. I will say, Ruth, this one more thing. Every Christian must have a personal altar, must have a family altar, and must have a church altar, and if possible, have a national altar. The secret of America today is that for a long time, they had a national altar. That altar, Thanksgiving, they come together as an entire nation and thank God. They even wrote it into their constitution. Despite all that the enemy has been doing, that altar is still being serviced. When the enemy found that he couldn't do anything, he went to raise Halloween as a contrary altar. 
Amen. As I round up, I have five minutes more. Are you really serious about God? You don't even treat God with the reverence that you treat your doctor. Whereas he's the heal, he's the omnipotent healer. You don't treat him with the reverence you treat your boss. Amen. You talk to him anyhow. Pray to him anyhow. Don't get me wrong, go. I'm not saying you shouldn't lie down on your bed when you are praying. No. You take anyhow posture. Amen. And if you do anyhow, you see anyhow. Today, I want to pray for you. I'm going to anoint everybody here very quickly. I want us to stand up on our feet. And I want you to begin to ask God. You see, when our general overseer prayed on Friday, he said, let fire fall upon our altars. When he said that the reason they call it firewood, that ordinarily it is wood, but it has fire in it. But he prayed one prayer, and that's the prayer I want us to pray. What was that prayer? He said, Lord, let your fire fall upon me and activate my destiny. Make me what I'm supposed to be. You can only encounter your destiny at that altar. You can only talk about the challenges that you are going through at that altar. You can only talk about where you want to go to at that altar. Are you here? Your prayer altar is dead. Dead. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How many of you in your house have one uh, fireplace? And since you entered that house, you have never switched it on. Amen. Oh, you bought a barbecue. Used it once. Used it twice. And that barbecue <laughs> is now decoration. You know the funniest thing? God said I should tell some of you that that's how your prayer altar is. So you hide under church prayers at 6 to 6 30. When you are doing that prayer, you are washing your teeth. Amen. You are frying dodo. Praise the Lord. I, of course, I know there's nobody like that here. All of you. Mandala, Kanda, Bakato, Lekede. But I'm just, I'm just talking generally. Praise the Lord. In fact, the person prays, say, In Jesus' mighty name, you pray. And sometimes, me too, I'm guilty. I'll quickly over my say, Amen. And then go back to what I'm doing. Of course, I know there's nobody that does what Pastor does. Praise the Lord. Oh, during digging deep, we're there. Another altar. He said, Hey, sister. <laughs> What, what, what? He said, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last thing you said. You didn't catch anything that I said. Holy fire, fall upon my altar. From within me, spirit, you take over. Holy fire, fall upon me. you are here and you want fresh fire to fall upon your prayer altar, please come out to the front now. You want fresh fire 
to fall upon your altar. Come to the front now. We want fresh fire. I'm going to need the ushers to be very, very vigilant. Just come to the front. Please form a straight line. Mandele now, I'm going to do something. Please just put your hands by your side. I'm going to put some oil in your hands. When I put the oil in your hand, 